Hi, I'm Chris Hiller. This talk is Possible Tools, the present and future of tooling in Node.js. So let's get to it. So again, the title of this talk is Possible Tools, the present and future of tooling in Node.js. So my name is Chris Hiller. I'm a developer advocate at IBM. Uh, I go by Bone Skull on the internet. I'm a Node.js core collaborator. I help maintain Mocha, which is a testing framework that some people use. I'm also an OpenJS Foundation Cross-Project Council voting member. And finally, I'm often a panelist on a fun podcast called JS Party. My avatar is displayed here. It's uh, a smirking orange skull within a black circle. So I'd like to start by defining what, what Node.js is. I'm sure you're all familiar with it, but let's get it from the horse's mouth. So I went to the nodejs.org website and I clicked through to the about page and I read the text and it said, blah, 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 Node.js is designed to build scalable network applications, blah, 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 blah. So you know that meme on Twitter the, the narrator meme, right? Where you, you say you're doing something and then the narrator pops in and, and, and says how it really is. Well, here, here's the narrator meme. It was mostly not used to build scalable network applications. So what do I, uh, the narrator, what does the narrator mean by this? Well, the narrator means Node.js builds the web. This shouldn't be a controversial statement. So we have data. We know that people mostly use Node to help build websites. They use it for what? Developer tooling, right? They use it for bundling, testing, linting, all sorts of things. So here's the more controversial statement. Node.js is a tooling framework. Now, it may not have been designed to be a tooling framework. But that's kind of where we're at. So there's kind of a, a problem here, I think. And I've given this problem a name. Now, it may not make too much sense, but it's a name. I call this the Node.js Server Tooling Impotence Mismatch. And so you may have heard of a, a similar term, which is the uh, Object Relational Impotence Mismatch. And so this term I just made up. And so uh, the, the deal behind the object relational impotence mismatch is it's difficult to map the concepts of a relational database to an object-oriented programming language and vice versa. So if you've ever used an ORM, you're probably, you're, you've probably felt this problem. Um, you know, we can think of objects in, in a programming language as a graph or a hierarchy. Well, instead, uh, the data in a relational database is tabular. So in a relational database, there's no notion of a class. There's no notion of encapsulation. There's no concept of inheritance or polymorphism. Uh, there's, there's no pointer, for example. So you might have a foreign key, but it's, it's not like a real reference. It's not a pointer. So in the case of Node.js, you have this core, and this core was designed to serve network applications. That's what it was built to do. But that's not what it turned out people were going to use it for. And so uh, because of this, you know, Node lacks this foundation. It lacks some first-class support for building tools. And happily, people went and they started building tools anyway. Um, but, you know, that's kind of where we're at. Now, uh, unlike the object relational impotence mismatch, which is sort of a wicked problem, if, if you will, um, the Node.js server tooling impotence mismatch can be solved. So if you were hoping for me to talk about, you know, why, why it is the way it is, like why, um, it started as this, this network 
uh, this this platform for building network applications and ended up as a as a, a, a tooling platform. Well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go into or speculate why um, why it is the way it is. Why why Node invested so much in the in the uh, network application side of things. Um, but you know this is where we're at right now, and that's what I want to talk about. This the title of this talk does not say the past; it's present and future, and that's what I'm going to talk about. So, um, what can we do about this? You may not have heard of the Node.js tooling group, but there is a thing, and it is called the Node.js tooling group, and it is uh, a official group, not not a working group, but it's official in in the Node.js org. Um, uh, to the right here, you're going to see some art. It's a Trojan horse. And the joke here is that you know, the tooling group wants to work within Node Core um, to improve, improve things for, for tooling authors and, and consumers of tools. And so we're going to get into Node Core, and we're going to you know, fix this from the inside out. So not really a declaration of war, but you know, we, we, need to, we need to change things at the Node Core level. So let me talk a little bit about the Node.js tooling group. So this group was formed in 2018. Um, myself and some others, I, I, had, I had talked to some people in, in the community, and, and we all shared a lot of the same frustrations. And so we thought we should try to come together as one mind and, um, and help solve this. So some of the members in the group, um, you, we have maintainers of NPM, Mocha, that's me. Uh, we have maintainers of Istanbul, NYC, um, Yargs, Create React App. Uh, these are popular tools and, and, and libraries. Uh, some of us are, are Node Core collaborators. Um, it's an active group. We've, we've got features under our belt. You know, our members have, have gotten gotten things in. We have current uh, initiatives, we have ongoing initiatives, and, and some future pie in the sky stuff, and I'm going to talk about the, these later. Um, we have a Slack if you want to chat. It's node-tooling.slack.com. Uh, go and sign up for that and pop in, and um, there are channels for various uh, tools, like there's an NYC channel, a Yards channel, an NPM channel, etc. So uh, a lot of us gather in there and talk about building these tools. We have open meetings every other week, meaning that if you want to come and participate, you can come and participate. Um, and so the, those meetings will be, there will be an issue in that GitHub repository, which is, again, node.js forward slash tooling. Uh, also, we stream these meetings on YouTube. So you know, if you don't want to participate, you just want to watch, you can just watch. There's actually going to be a meeting here at uh, the OpenJS Collaborators Summit. Not, not here, here, because this is OpenJS World. But after OpenJS World, there's this Collaborator Summit going on, and we're going to have a meeting there. So you uh, might want to check out the schedule and um, see what time zone that's in, wherever you are, and, and come check us out if, if you're uh, interested in building tools or if you're you know, a consumer of tools and really um, have some ideas about how things could be better. But um, yeah, whoever you are and if you're involved in building tools with Node, we'd love to hear from you. So next, I want to talk about a few things that we have done so far. So these are some completed initiatives that, are, that our members have brought to, to Node. Um, we have recursive file system operations, so Makedir and Rimdir. Uh, we have native source map support, which is um, which is still experimental, I think, but maybe not soon. Uh, native code coverage support, um, that's uh, that's improving. Again, these are these have landed, but you know there's room for improvement on some of these. We have flag introspection, which is useful if you want to um, if if you're a tool that needs to spawn other node processes. Um, or you want to pass node flags through uh, using your, your command line tool. Um, and uh, now this is not node core, but in my mind it's close enough. NPM workspaces are landing soon, which um, 
sounds pretty cool if you are uh, familiar with yarn workspaces npm workspaces are similar um, and I'm excited about that because I have a mono repo that um, I could really use some sort of workspace going on there. So uh, that should land. I'm not sure when exactly, maybe in the next major of NPM. So that's what we've done. Again, um, the way we work is we uh, kind of come together and we just say, hey, you know, I find this to be a problem. What do you all think? And other people agree, yes, this is a problem, and uh, how can we make this better? And so we brainstorm, we think about it. Uh, ultimately, it's up to the individual, so somebody has to send a pull request. Somebody has to write the code um, and just get it done. It, it, we don't have, have a roadmap per se. We have um, essentially a list of, of, of uh, initiatives that we'd like to look at, and whether or not anybody is working on any of these at any given time, you know, who knows? But um, you know, we don't, uh, we don't come in and, and say, you there, you in this tooling group must spend time doing this particular initiative. That's not how we work. That's not how Node.js works. Um, no roadmap, just, you know, whatever we all think is important, that's what gets done. So now let me talk a little bit about our current initiatives in the Node.js tooling group. first one is reloadable modules. Maybe there's a better name for it, but um, here's the deal with, with that. So you can't easily reload an ES module like you would a common JS module. So you can't go in and mess with the require.cache. There's no API for it. You just, you can't really do it without, without hacks. So what this does is it inhibits tooling. It inhibits module level mocks. So if you're using a library like proxy choir or rewire mock, uh, you're going to have trouble with those ES modules because it, I mean, it's just, it's not going to work because once the module's in, um, you can't change it. Uh, it inhibits tools that need to watch files and reload them. So maybe that's a, a test, a test runner or something. Um, and I think Right now, not a lot of people are really feeling this pain, and as more um, developers start uh, creating new packages uh, using ESM and Node.js, this is going to start to come up a lot more. So there is a little bit of urgency to, to address this um, because it's, just, it's not going to work like you want it to. It's not going to work um, like how it worked before with CommonJS. And so to solve this, um, we need to collaborate with the Node.js modules working group, um, you know, maybe even V8, uh, the V8 team at Google. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is, this is kind of going to be a bigger deal um, you know, as more people start to adopt ES modules. So we need to get this one solved. Next one is my favorite, argument parsing. So. Uh, you know process.argv.slice2, um, which is a really kind of ugly way to try to get at your, your command line arguments. So I think Node can do better, and I think it can do better with a, a very minimal API um, and provide a lot of value. So um, this would have a bare minimum of features. Um, so very, very simple stuff, maybe like one option or something. Um, the use cases here that we'd be focusing on, um, we, we'd uh, want this to be good for simple tools, um, code examples, you know, learning materials, or one-offs where you have a, a server or something and you need to just quickly add a, a, a flag or two. Now that quickly, that, that'll snowball if, if you've tried it, um, uh, trying to parse things and, and, and all sorts of stuff. So. Um, I think a little nice, um, straightforward API could, could go a long way here. Um, so I'm, I'm looking to get this done. Uh, right now we have some, some pretty solid ideas about how this should look. And, and to the right here we see an example. Um, the array that you see, foo, bar, baz, um, that, uh, that array is similar to what you would get in process.argv. 
that slice too. So um, by default, maybe it'll just use that, but you could you could give it your your own um, array of of uh, command line options, and it's going to return um, an object, and the object will have keys based on the the options and uh, values as appropriate, or maybe they're just flags, and then that um, underscore there you see that is a positional argument. So um, basically it's just an argument without dashes or anything in front. Uh, and that's kind of a convention that other libraries have used. Now this is not expected to replace uh, the user land libraries that we're already using to parse arguments um, like yargs or commander. Um, those are, are much more full featured and um, it, if, if you're reaching for those right now, you know, you might be able to get away with something like this, but um, again, those those are those are going to give you so much more than than what we can do here. So it's not really intended to be an API that you would want to build on top of, but more something that a user can just just pull in and, and use directly um, without having to go and reach for a package on npm. And the next one is 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 a rather large kind of cross-cutting um, initiative. And I don't have a good name for it, so I'm going to call it Ultimate Mega Hooks. And so the idea is you don't want to monkey patch stuff in, in Node itself. You don't want to go in and replace things in the FS module, for example. And you know, there are user lane modules that do this, and, and they do it by necessity because there's no other way to accomplish what they're trying to do. And so the, from several different areas, uh, several different teams within Node have identified that, look, we need some way to hook in to built-ins. We need some way to either, um, you know, change something that a, a function is returning. We need some way to tell if a function has been called. Um, you know, we want to spy on a function call, that sort of thing. And so there's, um, because, you know, several different teams, like, I don't know, diagnostics, security, and tooling, we all recognized that this was a need for different reasons. So if you're building a tool like a package manager, like a Yarn or a, an NPM, you might want to do something. Um, I, it's um, plug and play, right? So plug and play, the idea is that it, it kind of downloads stuff on the fly for you. But what it, it does to accomplish that is it, 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 it mucks with uh, Node's module resolution and, and sort of gives you this, this phony file system. And so right now to accomplish that, you have to go in and you need a monkey patch built-ins. And of course, the reason you don't want to do that is because it can break stuff. So, you know, if, if we have something in here, a hook, where you could go in and, and attach this hook and, um, you know, do it in a way that is not going to leak out or impact other libraries, you know, that would be ideal. Uh, another use case could be for um, application you know, pr uh, APM tools, um, instrumentation, if you're trying to go in and uh, grab some diagnostics, grab metrics on your apps. Um, this would be a great way for those tools to instrument your code. Sandboxing is another one. Uh, I think this is the, the security team's concern. Um, with the sandboxing, you may be able to lock down certain things. Um, if, if necessary. And then uh, again, from the tooling side, you know, this could um, provide a great way to actually mock built-ins in Node. So maybe you have some tests that um, uh, want to touch the file system. Uh, you can write, you know, some sort of integration test that way and use these hooks. Uh, so you're not, you're not um, befouling the file system with a whole bunch of files. And uh, yeah, so there's a lot of different use cases. Now, uh, this is and this is going to touch a lot of places in Node Core, and so we are forming an ad hoc group. Um, somebody's actually gone, and um, there is a uh, meeting, um, a collaboration session at uh, the OpenJS Collaborator Summit later this week. So check out the schedule if if this sounds like something you're interested in. Um, maybe. Uh, helping work out the requirements, or maybe you're interested in implementation. Um, 
But yeah, let's check that out and um, I'll be there. This next one is uh, kind of an ongoing uh, concern. More file system operations. So uh, when I started with Node.js, and I think a lot of people may have had this experience, it was it, essentially missing some APIs to do things. So, you know, I came from the Python world, and of course Python has it, it has everything in there. And so I was missing a uh, RM uh, a rim a remove directory or Christopher remove directory like a, a prune type of thing or a copy tree uh, type command um, if you know the sh utils module in Python um, so some of these are we have these these core uh, file system operations but they're not they're not they can't be used in recursive mode so uh, I mentioned um, makeder and rimder um, earlier where we had added recursive options to those uh, methods. And um, this would also be, you know, maybe we should add file system operations for chmod, chom, cbfile, maybe there's something else. Um, but that could be very helpful because these are, these are really kind of, I'm, I'm not going to say common, but they are um, pretty fundamental tasks that uh, uh, tools need to do. Um, another one is glob support, maybe be f further out on the horizon, but um, uh, the the glob uh, user land package is kind of ubiquitous and you know why do we why do we pull it in well if you want your command line app to accept glob patterns and you want to do it in a, a, a platform independent kind of way you're going to need something like the glob package because you can't rely on the shell to to do it the same way uh, across of course, across shells or e across uh, operating systems, and so um, adding something like glob support to 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 core would really kind of make it a lot easier for people just to to pull it in and deal with files this way. And um, yeah, I'd like to see it get done. I'm probably further out, but um, yeah, that's a good one. So uh, next, uh, I want to talk a little bit about. The, this is the possible part of the talk. So let's talk about the future. This is where the navel gazing begins. And I know you can't see me, I'm not on camera, but I am gazing at my navel right now. And I want to start with Windows Parity. So Windows Parity, another casualty of the server tooling impotence mismatch. You know, this has a lot to do with how Node was designed, what it was designed to do, and especially you know, where Node.js is intended to be run. So if you are writing a network application, where are you going to deploy it? You're going to deploy it probably to Linux. And so because of this, Linux is really the first class citizen in Node. The, the libraries that, are, uh, that Node is built upon are also Linux centric. And so Windows support has kind of been bolted on. And there's only really so much you can do because it is a diff completely different different operating system. But um, this is problematic, of course, because more developers are using Node on Windows than any other operating system. But there's also kind of a bias. So the Node core developers historically and, and probably even currently are using Linux or Mac as their daily development driver, not Windows. And so if we're not feeling this pain daily that, that Windows uh, developer, uh, the developers on Windows might have when using Node, um, it, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna be front and center. And so it's a little bit out of sight, out of mind. Um, and we haven't, we haven't heard from, from either of the two people that deploy Node to Windows, um, but you know, if you would like to get in touch, we'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, if Windows is your daily driver, if you write tools, um, you know, Node Core really needs people that, that develop on Windows, develop tools on Windows. Um, you know, Core and the tooling group would love to hear from you. The next one is also a bit of a, a cross-platform issue, and that's FSWatch and FSWatch file. If you've tried to use them before, they, don't, they simply just don't work very well outside of, of a few limited situations, mostly on Linux. And so um, what we have here is a little screen grab from NPM 
and there's a user land package called Chocodar, Chocodar, I don't know if I'm saying that right. But what that is, it basically fixes file watching um, on, on several different platforms. And so uh, this graphic is uh, the weekly download count from last week. So 23.5 million downloads of, of this package because FS Watch and FS Watch file don't work very well. And so this graph is essentially up and to the right. So, you know, FS Watch, th this is going to be kind of a tough nut to crack. You know, it, it may come down to, to pulling ideas from, from these user land packages and, and bringing them into Node. But, um, you know, as always, if, if, if you're interested in helping solve this, please get involved with the tooling group. Please get involved with Node Core. Um, you know, anybody can send a pull request, but um, yeah, we, we'd also love to, to work with you in the, in the tooling group to help get this solved. The next one is self-contained distributables. And so this would be node apps without the node. So in, in short, it's a way to package up your command line tool and uh, distribute it to your users and they don't have to have node installed, they don't have to have NPM installed. So there's a user land package called PKG um, by Zite. It's uh, Vercel now. Um, the description of this package is, this command line interface enables you to package your Node.js project into an executable that can be run even on devices without Node.js installed. And so the way this, this works is it basically has to compile Node and then compile your uh, specific tooling into that package and then, and then create a, a, a binary executable. So there's definitely room for improvements here, and I think those have to happen on the Node core side. So certainly if you're compiling Node and you are adding some extra JavaScript to it, there's going to be a lot of stuff in there you're not using. So maybe it's stuff in crypto. Maybe it's stuff in HTTP, HTTPS. Maybe it's worker threads. There's all sorts of things that you probably aren't using that are going to end up in that executable, and that's essentially just dead code. Um, so, you know, we could get those binary sizes down. Uh, we would need to find a way to, to best do that. Um, building node is also not fast. Um, how, can we, how can we improve that situation? Um, the startup time of node can be, can be very, very poor compared to, uh, you know, obviously something compiled in, you know, with, uh, GCC or, or some uh, or Rust program compiled down. Um, that startup time is, is kind of rough. You know, maybe it'll make a difference, maybe it won't. Uh, it really depends what you're doing. Um, but if you are interested in this problem, and I've heard this from several other people, um, please come into the Node.js tooling repo, uh, check out issue 32, and uh, add your comments, add your use case. Um, you know, what we really need, I think, at this point is to kind of come up with a strategy to solve it. Um, there's certainly a lot of different ways we could tackle the problem. Which way is the, the best way is, is uh, that's still on the table and we need to figure it out. So I'd like to thank Benco for this idea. Built-in command line tools. Um, so the problem is this. You have a package JSON, you have a script property in there, and in that script property are some scripts, and um, those scripts are in a shell. The things that you can do in there um, are, are pretty limited because that, sh that script may run in different shells. It might run in command, it might run in PowerShell, it might run in ZSH, it might run in bash. You can't do, there's not a lot of wheel room, in other words. And so say you have a script and you want to remove a directory. Well, how are you going to do that? And you can't. So you can't just expect a shell command to be there, expect the, the flags to work the same. Um, so if you want to do that in a portable way, you have to go right now and you need to um, you know, either wrap uh, nodes built in uh, Rimder in, in the FS module and expose that as a command line tool. Or go and uh, NBM install RimRaf. And so RimRaf provides a, a CLI. 
And that's what a lot of people do. They just go download RimRAF, and instead of calling rm-rf, you just call RimRAF because it's in JavaScript and it just works. So this is the problem. Because Node runs in many environments, it is more portable, and that's why people reach for RimRAF. Um, and one solution to this would be, you know, people have suggested NPM is the, is the, right, uh, the right tool to solve this, and I don't think so. I think this needs to happen in Node Core. So uh, Node.js prov would provide a CLI based, or, or a set of CLIs, um, based on its own built-in modules. One of those could be like RimRAF. So say, for example, you needed to delete a directory um, and you wanted that in your package JSON scripts. You could have a command like this below uh, where it says node dash dash require built. This doesn't exist. This is just, just brainstorming. But node dash dash require built in and you give it the, the, uh, some identifier, in this case, rimder, and then you pass the, the, uh, the flags to it. And um, you know, that would, be, that would uh, be guaranteed to work in any shell. And so that would be a great, a great way to, to, to um, you know, do this in a cross-platform way, do it with, without uh, requiring more of uh, user land modules. Um, there's some precedent for this. Python ships with executable modules. So uh, this command below, python-m simple HTTP server. So what this will do if you run it, if you, all you have to do is install Python. But if you run this command, it will... Um, create an HTTP server and serve the files in whatever directory you ran this in. Um, and so uh, it has these like built-in modules that you can just run. And that's cool. I think Node could do something similar. Um, I think it would be really beneficial for tooling. And um, it would provide kind of a standard way to solve some of the problems that people are, are encountering again and again in their, um, in their package JSON scripts. Finally, the last place I think uh, we should look for improving the tooling situation is JavaScript in itself. And I would love it if people uh, in the Node uh, tooling group and others uh, who are interested in, in Node tooling could participate in TC39. And so if you don't know what TC39 is, it's the team responsible for designing ECMAScript, uh, JavaScript the language, right? Um, and so, you know, if we are to have representation, if we're going to make sure that the language serves our use case, we need a seat at the table. And so, um, you know, we really, we really need some representation. If we, if we can't, uh, you know, send somebody to the meeting, certainly we should get in somebody's ear who's, who's going to be there. Um, there's a couple of proposals that, that I identified as being ones that, um, you know, are, are kind of uh, interesting and I think could really be beneficial for tools. Um, that first one is the binary AST proposal. Um, and so the idea here uh, is to um, make uh, web pages faster. We want to ship less bytes. And to ship less bytes, instead of shipping a text JavaScript file, we can ship a binary AST. Um, and so... This AST is an abstract, abstract syntax tree. If you're if you're not familiar with the with the acronym, but um, to me that sounds like a standardized AST of some sort. And so the current situation in in uh, the JavaScript community is that there is no standardized AST. There is a kind of community standard uh, in the ES tree. Um, I don't even know if that's a specification, but um, so it would really help tool interop and you know this 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 uh, AST format this binary format um, to be able to to have tools work with each other a little more smoothly. Um, so that one is probably a ways off, but uh, I think it has a lot of potential. The next one people have been trying to solve for a long time, and you may know of or have used uh, the. Uh, Node.js built-in domains, which um, is deprecated, but they, there was never anything really to replace it. And so the idea there is um, a realm, and a realm is a distinct global environment. So think the VM module where you uh, say, okay, these are my globals, and this is the script I'm going to run, go. Um, the problem with the VM module is it leaks. It, um, when you give it globals, 
you're not giving it a new set of globals, you're giving it your globals. So uh, it, the, the code running in this, the, the script running in the, the VM is using those same globals that you have in your globals. And so this leaks. Um, and so people have uh, solved this sort of sandboxing problem in other ways. Um, but the idea here is uh, to, to offer a, a better way to sandbox code. Um, it may be even replacing what people use iframes for now. So back a long time ago, we used to use iframes for something else entirely. And nowadays we're still using iframes, but for a different reason. Um, and so, and there's a lot of use cases for tooling here, including um, like, you know, test frameworks. And so maybe a test framework wants to isolate some code under test and make sure uh, that it's not, that we're not sharing an environment or stepping on each other's toes. And so I would love to see realms get solved. Also, if you're familiar with Angular and you know um, what a zone is, uh, realms are kind of similar to zones as well. So that's kind of my spiel about um, the present and future of tooling in Node. And uh, again, my name is Chris Hiller. I'm a developer advocate at IBM. And here are some links so you can hit me up um, via email. I am boneskull at boneskull.com. Uh, I am boneskull on GitHub. I'm boneskull with a zero on Twitter. And uh, that final link is a link to the JS Party podcast. Um, there uh, actually will be a JS Party podcast um, at uh, this uh, here conference later today. Go and check out the schedule and, and um, check out JS Party. It's pretty awesome. Again, my name is Chris Hiller. Uh, I'm happy to have had the chance to present here at OpenJS World 2020. Um, thank you very much and uh, I'll be around for Q&A.